be with you. Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Whether you're here in person or online, we are so grateful that you found your way here tonight. We hope that the gift of this Monday Thursday service, um, you can take a breath this week and feel God's presence during this holiest of weeks. We have traveled with Jesus throughout Lent, and perhaps along with the disciples, your feet are tired and dusty and calloused like the disciples. Um, and tonight we hear the story of Jesus graciously inviting his disciples to a meal to say goodbye. And during supper, Jesus does the unimaginable. He bends down and washes all of his disciples' feet upending all the social customs of the day, giving them this powerful example of what it means to give and receive love when he's gone. So as we contemplate all of this, we're thankful to receive the gifts of our musicians and the choir, um, and we're grateful for our pastoral intern, Sherry Larson, who will be preaching tonight. So just a few announcements before we begin. Um, the story that we begin here is going to continue tomorrow night, Good Friday, with a simple service of the Word at 7 p.m. here and online. Um, and this is a service where we will surrender ourselves to the dark places in this story so that, once again, we can proclaim the risen Christ on Easter morning. We have three options for worship on Easter. In person at 6.30 a.m. in our historic chapel, there's still room for you to reserve a spot online if you'd like. And in person and online at 9 and 10.45. Also, our chapel and cemetery grounds will be open from 8 to 5, both Saturday and Sunday. And finally, if you would like to support summer youth trips to Kansas City and Wilderness Canoe Base, please take part in our flower sale. The order forms are at the welcome desk and are due next Wednesday, August the 20th. So with that, we enter the story with hearts open to the mystery of this week and all it has to teach us. Please stand as you are able for our time of confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation on this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit 
that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Show us how to serve the neighbors we 
<clears throat> now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me Lord and teacher, and you are right, for that is what I am. <clears throat> so if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You do not know now what I am doing, Jesus says, but later you will understand. This makes me think of a similar sentiment familiar to parents and children, even perhaps older siblings to younger. When you get to be my age, you'll understand. I heard myself saying this to my nephew this week who was visiting my home and who wondered why I have so many reading glasses all over the house, <laughs> really at an arm's length of any place I might choose to sit. When you get to be my age, you'll understand. Some of you have, and you do understand. It's an if-you-knew-what-I-knew statement. Again, parents might say this to children, and in this reading, Jesus actually calls his disciples little children. This endearing statement is a request for trust. Trust that the details aren't important right now, that perhaps the answer is complex. It's a response that says, trust me because you know that I love you. 
In this passage, Jesus knows some difficult truths that his disciples do not know. That his hour has come to depart from this world so that the Father put all things into his care. That Satan has already nudged Judas to betray Jesus. We sometimes get the impression that Judas was always on the outs with Jesus, but in this passage, they share a meal together. And they have done so before, at the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Judas might still remember the overwhelming aroma of perfume that Mary poured on Jesus' feet. And when Judas leaves this meal, he will do so on feet washed by Jesus. But to go back, I wonder if you knew what Jesus knew in this moment, that the end is near, that the disciples do not yet understand or trust him, how might you respond? The things that come to my mind include running away, hiding, scolding, confronting. I might be angry if I were Jesus. I might be stalled out in frustration. Instead, Jesus got up from the table, poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus gives this example, showing them and us what discipleship looks like. Now, it's not difficult to think of ourselves as unable to do the great things that God has done in the world. Create it, for example make enduring promises to Abraham and Sarah, to Isaac and Rebecca, split the Red Sea to make way for the people, bring manna to the wandering people in the wilderness. Similarly, the disciples likely thought of themselves as unable to do the things that Christ has done, to heal with a touch, with a word, to calm the sea, or to walk on water. In this story, Jesus gives a simple command to love. It's not a command to be powerful and mighty, but to stoop down at the feet of others and to serve. This is the example Jesus sets and calls on the disciples to imitate and to live out. Jesus says, where I am going, you cannot go. But he assertively shows and names exactly what they and we can do. Love one another. Though simple, it won't be easy. I wonder if any of the disciples recognize the immensity of this commandment. I bet Simon Peter might want to raise his hand and say, Actually, Jesus, I'd rather if you just give me the power to feed the 5,000 or maybe to cast out demons. Because loving people as Jesus does, no matter what, no matter whom, is difficult. Jesus loves by performing the task of the lowliest servant. It's hard for the disciples and it's hard for us to grasp the power of simplicity. Our world is complex. We are inundated with news of conflict, of difference, of division. Even a civil conversation with someone with whom we disagree could feel impossible. It can be hard to imagine how we could respond with the kind of love that foot washing requires. The dwelling in the word text study group this week discussed how it might feel equally impossible to be vulnerable enough to accept this kind of gift of love. In fact, we might most resist help when we are most in need. Simon Peter wanted nothing to do with Jesus, his leader and teacher, washing his feet. But vulnerability is also a part of discipleship, part of being in compassionate relationship with each other. A church member recently shared the work of Pastor Steve Garnis Holmes and his website, Unfolding Light. His Monday Thursday reflection urges us to recognize how we might be complicit 
in perpetuating injustice or oppression by the things that we do and the things that we do not do as Christians. Pastor Holmes writes, at the same time that God judges these evils, God loves us, forgives us, redeems us, empowering us to live in new ways. I am both convicted by and inspired by Pastor Holmes' words. At the same time that we wrestle with conflict and struggle, the same time that we realize how our biases and perceptions might stir unkindness and even cause division, God loves us, forgives us, redeems us, and enables us. That is what we will step forward soon to recognize in the Holy Communion meal. As we break bread together, we enter into God's grace, love, and redemption. Again and again, we return and recall God's saving work in Christ through bread and wine, Christ's body broken, Christ's blood shed for you, for all of us. You do not know now what I am doing, Jesus says, though the hour has come and he knows it. Judas has already begun the betrayal of abandoning Jesus, and Peter, too, will soon deny his identity as a disciple and as a friend of Jesus. Amidst betrayal and denial, Jesus says, Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus gets up from the table, pours water into the basin, and begins to wash the disciples' feet. It is another moment of extravagant abundant, excessive, overflowing to the floor, love. And it is a proclamation of the undeniable, immeasurable grace of God to love one another again and again, to be loved by one another today, tomorrow, and the next day, and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we are called into this story once again, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is time both to share in peace and offer our peace to one another and also uh, for our offering of our lives, um, our financial gifts, our talents, our presence here tonight. And so if you are online, um, we join with you in the sharing of the peace for you to type your peace comments and uh, we will connect with you that way if you're here at church for us to extend ourselves and look around and see your community both here and online and uh, we will have an offering basket out in front both for the kids um, that money goes to feed world hunger but also uh, for us as well to invest in the vision and mission of mount olivet and so now may the peace of god be with you all let's both share and receive peace from those around us was an original composition by Mount Olivet member Kim Capel and thank you choir and Blake and Angela for embodying that so beautifully and now we pray God of the wilderness we give you these offerings in gratitude rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us we give you these offerings in faith trusting that you will provide for our needs. 
we give you these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in this world. With these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we again partake in this night, we now pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There's a place for you at this table. This night is so meaningful, for this was the night in which this meal was instituted. As the Gospel of John said, for Jesus to love his followers so much and to love them to the end, that not only is Jesus saving in this meal, but he's teaching us how to live this life of love. It's already in our heart. You know how to wash someone's feet. You know what that sign of that love means to get down at their level and care for them. And same with this meal, something so ordinary as eating together is an act of love to receive God's love, not a God that is far off in the distance, but is here in human form, showing us the dailiness of what that love is. It's already in your heart. So simply open your hands and receive this gift of God's grace that we will hear in the days to come, even conquers the grave. If you are online, whatever you are using as bread and wine tonight, hear this. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Ushers will uh, guide you up front. The cracker is gluten-free, wine is red, and grape juice is light in color. You're welcome to pray where you are or come up front and use the kneelers. Please come forward. This meal of love is prepared. Cannot 
cling to the shadows again. So here on this altar tonight, I lay every dream I've ever dreamt. Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We pray together. Savior Jesus, at this table, you have given us all that you have, your body and blood, your mercy and love, your wisdom and promises. Give us faith to know you are with us in all things. Encourage to live your vision of a world where the greatest among us is the one who lives in service to others. Amen. We now pray. We have been forgiven and we have been fed and we have been taught how to love. And so now with our full selves, uh, we speak to God trusting in a God who knows us as human as we are. And as we speak the places where we are calling God to be in this world, the places that are empty and broken and sick and hurting and oppressed. In addition to those places where we have caught a glimpse of God at work and our hearts are filled with gratitude. And on this night, we trust that a God that would go as far as death for the world is a God that will listen to our prayers and use us to be that expression, that embodiment of love. So if you are online, uh, please type your comments and I will read those to the community here at church and to the community here at church in just a minute. I just ask that you raise your hand, speak your prayer, and I will come close to you and read those 
so our friends online can be a part of that as well. So let's pray. God, we pray on this holy week, the story that goes on and on, every detail, each of the Gospels, recounting the days and the hours, all the things done and undone for us to hear again that we're included. It's not a story about someone else, God. It is a story of us in all our humanness, in our fickleness, to praise and then to neglect. And God, in some way for us to know that that great love of that night so much love to make accessible to others, to teach us what it means to love even when you're not here. Remind us again, stir that up in us again, that you have already called us and given us these gifts. And so hear now the prayers that we pray. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have tonight? Yeah, Mark. Yeah. God, not many words tonight. Prayers of peace for this world that you love so much. Uh, for it to be whole and healthy, equipped and flourishing. For it to give and receive, God, and for it to spin on an access of love. God, may this be so. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Vicki. So, Vicki is praying for her neighbors, uh, two people in... Uh, the building in which she lives, Peg and Ken, um, who have died, um, who have been neighbors um, and now become communion of saints. Vicki is praying for their families in their time of grief, grief in a holy week where death is so real and raw, uh, walking every footstep. God, uh, we speak the names, Peg and Ken, for how you held them in this world and now in heaven. Um, and also uh, for the daily acts of love, compassionately, uh, especially in the time of grief when a family is disoriented and not knowing what's next and adjusting um, as best as they can to a life now that is different. Uh, God, we pray for healing. We pray for love. Uh, we pray for this promise that there's nothing that can separate um, your love from us, even in death. God, in your mercy. Kim. Hmm. Uh, God, we pray for Kristen, Kim's colleague, um, dealing with debilitating depression and anxiety. Um, it seems like a prayer that we speak every week. And still in this world, there's a stigma. Just shake it off get outside, feel better. Uh, the chronicness, the chemical imbalances, um, things that trigger us into those places. And so we pray especially for Kristen tonight, uh, for her wholeness and her care, for people to come close to her, for all the things of this world, science and uh, medicine and therapy, and trained people in a community of love that includes Kim. Um, God, we pray for your deep sense of healing uh, for Kristen and for all those struggling in the midst with mental illness. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Renee. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, Renee, um, I want to first start for you as caregiver. Um, 
you have walked a journey with your mom, Lavon. Um, her body has held a lot in this life, in her many decades, and now in memory care, beginning hospice, which speaks uh, that death will come, which is true for all of us, um, that may be more true for your mom in these days. And for you, um, Renee, to be able to let go and allow the giftedness of others now to come close to your mom so you can be daughter and trust in the care that she is receiving um, and in this promise of love that God has for your mom, for you to settle in in this time and receive that love for yourself as well. God, for all these pieces and components that goes into relationships, um, to balance that, to settle that, to come close. God, in your mercy. Karen. Oh, wow. Karen, uh, for your son and daughter-in-law, uh, retirement, a new chapter, um, uh, letting go of a, a schedule that demands things um, and opening themselves up to a schedule where they are called to be places that they normally wouldn't be. Um, and for you to even pray that as a mother um, um, and to celebrate that new chapter for them. Uh, God, in your mercy. All right, dear friends online. Joanne, prayers for my 98-year-old mom who's recovering from pneumonia. Uh, Joanne, uh, for your mom who um, is seeing glimpses of 100, um, for her lungs that um, are old and still breathing, for recovering um, from an infection, um, that is scary. That is very scary. And so we pray for healing, Joanne, for, for your mom, um, for your love to come close to her as well. God, in your mercy. Um, yeah. Samantha, um, prayers to my mom, Jean Gass, who had hip surgery today and that she can heal for a speedy recovery. Indeed, Sam, we join you and your mom for the miracle of that surgery um, to put in new equipment in our bodies for um, mobility, uh, for her uh, to be slow and steady these days and for her to be back on her feet and moving around as soon as she can. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Teresa, thank you. Uh, Teresa's prayer is for our pastor supporting this church and congregation. Uh, we receive that with love, Teresa. Thank you so much. Uh, God, in your mercy. Uh, God, for these things that we have prayed tonight, for our ongoing um, prayers, um, our wonderings to be caught up in the story in these next days as well. Amen. Um, you uh, may have noticed um, after communion that our altar is stripped. Um, in this Monday, Thursday, uh, we take the visible signs of um, Jesus' presence in the midst of the place that we worship and take those away um, as a foreshadowing of what comes tomorrow um, when the only thing that remains is Jesus hanging on a cross. And so um, tonight our sending is a hymn, and then we will dismiss you in peace and quiet as you make your way.
Christ to pray. In peace, love one another. Amen. Thank you.